This is lecture 10, the second part of lecture 10 for conveyor models for IE 4355 uh, facilities planning. As always, we start our lecture showing the course objectives and highlighting the, the objective that is connected with the material presented in this uh, video lecture. Uh, so in this case is objective number one, which is to develop an understanding of the principles of facilities location, layout and material handling systems, and to practice designing facilities. So this, this lecture is a, is a continuation of the, the previous uh, video lecture in which we consider conveyor loop with deterministic loading and unloading sequences. Uh, what this means is that by, by meaning the meaning of deterministic loading and unloading, what that represents is that in this type of problems, we are assuming that we know from, from, from the beginning the number of units that are going to be loaded and unloaded and the sequences. For the second part, which is this video lecture, we're gonna focus on conveyor loop with Poisson arrivals meaning that we are adding some uncertainty into the loading and unloading uh, sequences for conveyors with discrete carriers, with discrete carriers. So the idea now is to uh, relax that assumption that, that we know for sure. I mean, we are assuming deterministic uh, loading and unloading sequences. Now we want to add some, some uncertainty in terms of adding the Poisson arrivals uh, that are represented by the Poisson distribution. So the learning objectives for this lecture are to learn models for specific type of conveyors and understand the basic procedures for calculating um, horsepower requirements for power belt and roller conveyors. So in our previous uh, lecture, we focus on the conveyors loop with deterministic loading and unloading sequences. Uh, so this is more like a review. We started by considering this general example in which we have uh, multiple workstations located around the conveyor. Uh, they are discreetly spaced carrier carriers. And then you have um, uh, each station can perform loading and unloading state uh, processes. Um, and there are K carriers equally spaced around the conveyor. So the, the, com, the, the carriers are represented by the, uh, those black dots and the workstations are represented by the circles. So again, this is a, a review from, from the previous video. So here's our, our discussion on in terms of the, how are we gonna, so the idea is to, knowing the system, so a system like this in which you have these carriers and then you have these stations that are loading and unloading, you want to determine the capacity uh, for the, the carriers in terms of how many units the carrier should load uh, based on the operations that are performed around the conveyor. And we went through this in the, in the previous uh, video lecture what I wanted to highlight is that the, the, the deterministic aspect of loading and unloading sequences. So if you have a deterministic problem, which you know for sure how many units are going to be loading and unloaded per station, then you can follow this methodology that we discussed in the previous video that will tell you, or oh, at the end, after applying the methodology, you will be able to determine the capacity for, um, for the carriers. So in this case, in this example, that capacity was equal to four. So the, the, the goal of this lecture is now knowing how to deal with the deterministic um, loading and unloading sequences. Now we want to uh, add an extra level of complexity, which is the, the Poisson arrivals. Um, so this conveyor loop with Poisson arrivals 
Uh, this topic is also concerned with the performance of a closed loop unidirectional recirculating conveyor with stations located around it. However, each station is either a loading station or an unloading station. No station performs both type of operations. There is an input output queue for each loading or unloading station as opposed to following a deterministic pattern, items at loading station I are placed one at a time in the input queue of station I according to an independent Poisson process with a rate lambda I greater than zero. And the conveyor consists of equal size windows. Each window holds at both one item. Various conveyors, such as the trolley conveyor, in which the carrier represents a window, tilt tray conveyors, in which the tray is equal to a window, and cross belt conveyors, in which the belt position is equal to a window that is represented in this uh, uh, explanation, fit this second model, the conveyor loop with Poisson arrivals. The conveyor has a user specified constant length and speed. So we, we are specifying that from the beginning. The length is expressed in number of windows and the speed is measured in the number of windows passing by a fixed point per unit time. So here's some of the parameters. PIJ represents the probability that an item arriving at loading station I needs to be delivered to unloading station J. Okay, so if you have four stations, then there's a probability that um, let's say two of those stations are loading, two of those stations are unloading stations. So what is the probability that if you have two stations uh, from one loading station goes to one of the other two? So that's the probability. Um, then we have FIJ, which is the flow rate from station I to J. The flow rate or FIJ is gonna be equal to the lambda I times the probability PIJ. Suppose there are M loading and N unloading stations, then theta set of loading stations, um, then Omega denotes the set of unloading stations and Delta denotes the rate at which the conveyor delivers loads to the output queue at unloading station J. From conservation of flow, we must have the summation of Lambda has to be equal to the summation of deltas, um, which is loading versus unloading has to be equal. To derive the stability condition, the conveyor loop is divided into K segments, denoted by S1, S2, up to SK. Okay, so a segment in this case is showing this many windows. So SI here has this many windows, uh, where K equals M plus N. As shown in this figure, SI, I equals one up to K, represents the set of windows on the conveyor between station I minus one and station I. So this is station I minus one, and this is station I. So in total, the number of windows will be equal to this difference. Uh, by definition, each segment SI ends with a loading or unloading station. So what that means is that each statement will include one of the loading or one of the unloading stations. Delta I denotes the required flow rate items per unit in conveyor segment SI. By definition, that's gonna be equal to Delta I, summation for all Ks and Ls, FKL, uh, which uh, stated earlier, this is the flow rate from station I to J. 
and Z-I-K-L. So as defined earlier, if KL is the flow rate up from loading station K2 and loading station L, ZKLI equals one if the load from station K to L travels through segment SI and zero otherwise. So if that load is, trans, uh, is transported through this piece of the segment, then that variable is gonna be equal to one. But if it is not passing through this segment, then, then that's gonna be equal to zero. V denote the speed of the conveyor and QI denote the ratio of the required flow rate in segment I to the speed conveyor or to the speed of the conveyor. Uh, research has established that if we have a ratio lambda I divided by the velocity minus delta I, if that ratio is equal less than one, is a necessary and sufficient condition for loading station I to be stable. That is, in steady state, each item arriving at the input queue of station I will be eventually placed on the conveyor if the above inequality is satisfied. The above inequality can be rewritten as follows. Uh, we can look at, uh, if we solve for B, uh, you will get the same defined as the stability factor for loading station I or SFI. Hence the conveyor loop is stable if and only if this SFI is less than one. For all I's in, in theta, that is if and only if this ratio is satisfied. So let's consider this um, example in which we want to determine the minimum required conveyor speed. Consider a closed loop unidirectional conveyor loop with 52 windows as shown in this figure. Four stations are located around the conveyor. So we have the numbers one, two, three, and four. Um, four and two are loading stations. Three and one are unloading stations. Suppose that Lambda equals two, 30 items per minute, and lambda four equals 20 items per minute. Suppose that the probability two to one is, so the probability of going from um, loading station two to loading station one, unloading station one is 60%, and the probability of going from two to three, which is right here, is 40%. Same thing here, from loading station four to unloading station one is 0.25, the probability. So it's making this huge loop right here. And point uh, probability of going from four to three is 75%. Assuming the conveyor turns in a clockwise direction, so it goes in this other uh, clockwise, meaning that the conveyor is going to rotate this way. Determine the minimum speed required in windows per minute to ensure that the conveyor loop is stable. So, um, so we start with determining the flow rate from station I to J. So flow rate from two to one is 18, from two to three is 12, from four to one is Five and from four to three is 15. With closed white rotation, the four segments of the conveyor are defined as follows. So segment one goes from one, from here to here. So include that, uh, that unloading piece. And then segment two will go from, let me use another color. We'll go from 12 up to here. And so on. The two segments that end with a loading station 
for segment two and four. Given the above FIJ values for segment two and four, we can compute delta I. The required flow rate items per unit in a conveyor segment is I. So delta I is gonna be equal to this. Um, so you have to check whether or not this is gonna be zero or one, depending on if an item goes through a specific um, segment. So by computing delta two, that's equal to 15 and delta four is 18. The your loop is stable if and only if this ratio is satisfied. That is when it is speed or velocity greater or equal or greater than lambda i plus delta i for i equals two and four. We obtain the velocity or speed greater than 30 plus 15, which is equal to 41, 45 for i equals two. The velocity greater than 20 plus 18, which is equal to 38 for i equals four. Hence, the conveyor speed must be greater than 45 windows per minute in order to be stable. And that concludes our discussion on conveyors um, models. Um, and then uh, you will have uh, some problems to work with as part of this topic in the assignment.